In our last episode, we looked at more task types for the reading section, specifically matching and classifying. In this episode, let's jump over to an area we haven't visited in a while, and that is the speaking component. Hey guys, welcome to the 30th episode of Hacking IELTS. For those of you who have been watching the channel since episode one, I really appreciate your support and you've seen the look of the episodes gradually change since August of 2019. But if you're joining us for the first time, this is a podcast and a YouTube channel dedicated to helping new and intermediate IELTS test takers understand the exam and attain higher results. Last time we reviewed academic reading and in this episode, let's shift gears and jump back over to the speaking test. But first, let's recap all that we learned from last time about reading. For classification tasks in the reading section, we learned that we never get statements that are exactly the same as displayed in the questions. Instead, they're going to be worded differently or paraphrased. And with regards to the number of categories, the number of statements will not always be the same. We also saw that the categories will most likely be listed alphabetically, which means they will not match the order in which they appear in the reading passage. Matching and classification are the rare cases for IELTS in which you will not have information listed in order. We also touched on true, false, and not given questions and how we need to look for keywords which can help you to decide where you should focus in the reading that you're working on. We also saw that if the reading passage has information that is somehow related to the statement, but doesn't actually agree or disagree, we should write not given. Let's move on now to another type of task type, and this is table completion for the reading component. For this particular task, ensure that you read the instructions carefully to see how many words and numbers you can use to answer each of the following questions. Regarding the task type of gap fill for tables, we learned that the headings can predict the missing types of information you will need to provide for the respective table. For sentence completion tasks, we covered the strategy of predicting the kind of answer you're looking for, employing our powers of paraphrasing and using synonyms. Finally, we suggested that we need to really be aware that more than one ending could possibly complete the sentence. Okay, that was a lot of review, but let's switch gears now and jump over to the speaking component of IELTS. Do you recall in our last session how we discussed keywords in the reading passages? Well, this is a strategy we can also utilize for part two, or the long term of the speaking test. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why is he mentioning keyword for the speaking test? Stay with me. Before we get to the keywords for the speaking test, Let's make sure you remember and understand the structure of IELTS speaking. To review, we have three parts and this exam's extremely precise, running from 11 to 14 minutes in duration. Part one is the introductory component, which is the easy warm-up section. If you know anything about this test already, you know that part one is just to put you at ease with questions that could be answered with not much thought. Topics will range from school to work, TV, movies, sports, even where you live, or your favorite color. But then we head to part two, where you will be assigned with a speaking topic in a box, which is referred to as the speaking prompt. Okay, here's where we refer back to keywords that were mentioned earlier on. You won't be able to write on the prompt booklet that's provided by the speaking examiner, since it essentially contains all the speaking prompts used by the examiner on the exam day. However, you will be given some blank paper where you can write as much as you want, but only over a period of one minute. While you can't underline or circle keywords from the prompt, you can write down these keywords and then all you know about them in point form. As a reminder, you have only 60 seconds to plan your speaking for this part of the test. So avoid writing complete sentences. Heck, you could even write your ideas in your own language if it's going to be faster and easier. The main thing is that you try your best to organize your points clearly and in a logical manner 
before you start the long term. Unfortunately, some test takers fail to catch these keywords, and some people choose to not even write anything at all. Look, if you don't want to stumble through this part of the test, it's best just to jot down some notes and make sure you're prepared before you start to talk. An even better option would be to get online, find some speaking topics for IELTS, then perform the following exercise. First, time yourself for a given writing prompt. See how much you can write down about the topic in one minute. Next, try to speak on that topic for one to two minutes. You'll see how difficult it is to continue before you dry up and can't keep going. If you can speak on a given topic for one minute, you're doing all right. But if you can speak on a given topic for nearly two minutes, well, that's going to be exceptional. Why? Because your examiner will want you to speak as long as possible in order to assess your speaking skills accurately. Don't be concerned if you're talking for too long since it's the examiner's responsibility to interrupt you, informing you that this part of the test is complete. Afterwards, you'll be asked a few follow-up questions about this task just to close this section before moving to part three, which is a dialogue related to the subject of part two. And guess what? Some examiners claim they may know a test taker's score 30 seconds into the test, but really the examiner should be assessing you through the entire exam right from part one up until part three. If you have a friend who is also taking the test, why not give each other speaking topics and then time each other? You could even find the IELTS speaking rubric online to see how you'll be evaluated. Remember, no one is ever born an exceptional and articulate speaker. Like most things in life, it's a skill that takes time and practice to develop. It's a skill that you too can have if you put in the hard work and stay focused. Let's part things here with a fantastic expression. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. Okay, this wraps up things for this week. Did this episode help you out? Let me know in the comment section on YouTube. And be sure to subscribe for new videos like this every week. Or be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. You can also sign up for free courses over at hackingiouts.com. Take care, guys, and catch you in the next one.